Hi guys, welcome to Sunday evening. It's uh, another session that we're running as part of the mini series of deal sourcing. And tonight's session is all about mastering deal sourcing. And pretty much this is a session where we're gonna be answering all your questions. So if you've got a question or if you've watched some of the other episodes that we've done within this series and you're not 100% sure and you've got some questions that you weren't so, that you wanted to ask previously, but we perhaps we didn't get round to ask, uh, answering, feel free to ask them now. So if you wouldn't mind, as Mark has done in the comments box, if you wouldn't mind just saying a quick hi, hello, let me know that you can hear me nice and loudly and clearly, that would be much appreciated. And we're gonna get started. So as you may be aware, we're live on Instagram, we're live on Facebook, YouTube, as well as this webinar. So we've got quite a few people over a number of different platforms. So I really hope that you're enjoying it wherever you're watching it. I always start these sessions by saying just a, a thank you because it's not a given that people are gonna watch, it's not a given that people are gonna join us on these sessions. Uh, and I appreciate it's Bank Holiday Sunday when you're watching this uh, live and there's it's been a lovely day. And let's, let's face it, if you're a football fan, we've had a great afternoon of football. Uh, so there's lots of things that you could be doing, but you decided to spend it with me this evening. So I really thank you for that. So let's get moving straight on. So I always start these sessions as well by kind of just reaffirming who I am in the industry, because I know that there's lots of people out in the property space. I know there's lots of people talking about property in the property space. So why should you be listening to me? What makes me any different? Well, first and foremost, I've got to say this, that I'm a property investor. I've been investing in property uh, for the last, well, full time for the last 23 years. But on top of that, I've been involved in property, you could say the best part of 40 years. Uh, so how it all started, my father had some uh, a small portfolio of properties. And then when I left university, I decided to join the family business. Uh, and I had to go through a mini restructure program where I found that his portfolio was kind of losing money. And I had to restructure it so that it started making money. And after I did that, I got bored. So I decided to go out and start trading property. And, and this is a part that I found interesting. When I say I found it interesting is because when you buy a property, you know, acquiring it and doing the deal for me is the, is the interesting part. Once you actually own it, it's actually quite boring. And I, I, I'm assuming some of you would agree with that. Give me a quick yes or no. So... I like the acquisition, I like the chase, I like dealing with the problem, I like solving the problem. And once I've acquired it, I then pass it on to my management team and then they manage it for me. So I'm still actively investing. Uh, this week alone, I've hopefully, touch wood, agreed a deal, uh, which is gonna be worth the best part of five million pounds. Now that's a big number and don't be afraid when people talk to you about big numbers because believe it or not, the process remains the same. So. I've seen people say, oh, I'm doing a 30 million pound deal. Okay, great. I'm doing a 100,000 pound deal. I'm doing a house which is 100,000. I'm doing a, a house which is 40,000. Reality is the process remains the same. It's just bigger numbers. It's just a bigger deposit required. There's more risk perhaps attached to a 30 million pound deal. So what? So don't get afraid by that. So I'm a property investor. I'm a sourcer. So my one of my proudest moments is that I founded this platform called the Property Investor App. So if you don't know what it is, the Property Investor app, if I was to summarize it in 20 seconds, it's a platform very similar to Rightmove, but only showcases property investment deals. So whether you're looking for a below market value deal, like a rent to rent deal, a lease option deal, we've got them all there. So it is a mobile app, which means that you can go to the app store, you can download it by searching Property Investor, or if you wanna just go to the website, you can do by going to propertyinvestorapp.co.uk. I'm also a feature uh, columnist or a magazine writer for three very well-known magazines, which I'll write in every month. So we've got Your Property Network magazine, we've got the HMO magazine, and I also feature in, uh, I think it's Blue Bricks, and I've done other, lots of other features in lots of different publications across the country. Um, I speak at property events all over the country. Um, and what makes me different is that I kind of, I kind of bring the realism back into into the industry where lots of people are talking about all the great things they're doing. I sometimes talk about the things that have not gone so well. Um, and that's what kind of makes me different. Well, is that I wrote a book talking about things that didn't go so well. I wrote a book called Boom, Bust and Back Again. And as the title suggests, I've seen some good times in the boom 
I've seen some really bad times and I nearly went bust. And I had to claw myself back out and tell the tale. So I've helped hundreds of people achieve financial freedom, but I could only do that by going through the issues that I faced along the journey. So I teach people to do the things that they don't need to do. So I try and teach them to do it correctly so that they don't go through the pitfalls that I did. So that's me in a nutshell. So I've got a fair bit of experience. I'm not one of these guys that just came off a workshop last week and then all of a sudden I've done one or two deals and now I perceive to be an expert. That's not me. I've done hundreds, thousands of deals. So whether these are properties that I've acquired for myself, so I've got a decent sized portfolio. Um, and as well as that, I, um, as well as that, I trade a lot of properties. So let's get moving on. So Mark says, is that Dubai? That picture that you see on your screen right now, Mark, is in Dubai, but I'm actually based in this lovely place. It's probably the greatest place on earth. It's called Wolverhampton and that's in the West Midlands. So yes, I do like going on holiday and that is one of the things that I really like doing. I like getting away. I like having fun. I like, and that's what properties allow me to do, is bought me my freedom. So let's get moving on. Let's get into the Q&A. So what's brought you to this session this evening? So I've asked a question on screen. Do you really want to do this? So in the comments box there, just tell me what's intrigued you to come on to tonight's session? What's intrigued you to come on tonight's session? Mark says, um, I thought I could hear a, a Bromley twang. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm based in Wolverhampton of the West Midlands. Okay, so Mark says, I also have trouble finding deals. Now, for me, finding deals is not in actual fact the issue. Once you understand how to find deals, believe it or not, it's actually the easiest thing. So let's get straight into it. So I've asked the question, do you really want to do this? Uh, Miri says, I want to make money. Now, don't we all, Miri? Believe it or not, making money is actually quite easy as well. You've got to be receptive to making money. Now, uh, when I talk about receptive, if someone says to you, Miri, here's an opportunity, what does your mindset tell you to do? Does it say that, oh, I'm not so sure about this? Or does your mindset say yes? And then you learn how to do it. Have you ever come across a famous quote by Richard Branson that says, if you're not 100% sure how to do it, if someone offers you an opportunity, you're not 100% sure how to do it, why don't you say yes? and learn how to do it along the way, because that's exactly what I did. You know, I can come, I can tell you story after story about property after property where people offered me a property, and even if it wasn't of interest to me immediately, I said yes to it straight away. The reason why I said yes to it is because if I said no to it, there's a very good chance that that opportunity would have then been passed on to someone else, which means that I've lost that opportunity. When we talk about opportunity, it gives me the opportunity to, do the research. So just because I yes, I say yes to it, to it, it doesn't mean that I've legally committed myself to a property. All I'm saying is, yes, I'm interested. And off the back of that, I've now bought myself the time and the freedom of that opportunity to be able to do the research and then go back to them with a more informed yes or no, whether I like this property or not. Does that kind of make sense, Miri? So uh, thank you for the question. That's a great question. So. I've put on screen now some of the most common questions. So uh, remember, this is a Q&A session. So this Q&A session will only really work if you guys are asking me some questions. So over the years that I've been running the Elite Property Tribe, so the Elite Property Tribe is a training program that I've run, and it's all around deal sourcing. It's all about how to find deals, how to appraise deals, how to package deals. And I've got on screen 10 of the most common questions that people have asked. The first question that always comes up is around compliance. Now, there are industry experts around compliance. Um, I know that there's Tina Walsh, I try and tag her into a video. So she, uh, she's one of the experts that I kind of recommend to people on compliance. Now, for those that don't know, if you're involved in the transaction of negotiating a deal or estate agency style transaction, you do need to be compliant. Now, when it comes to compliance, it talks about you have to be a member of, uh, so there's four steps that you're asked to do, uh, which is the basic st steps of compliance. There are further advanced steps of compliance, but let's go through the basic ones. You have to be a member of the property redress scheme. So property redress scheme, on average, it's around 100 pounds a year. 
so that's that. It's very easy to do. It's an online application. You can do it literally within the space of 10 minutes, and you're then a member of the PRS, a property redress scheme. You get a certificate and also a membership number. So that's easy. Now, on top of uh, compliance, you also then uh, need to be a member of the ICO, which is Information Commission's Officer. Uh, now, what that is, is pretty much a, a database saying that you're collecting data of other people. So you may have data of property investors, you may have data of um, other sellers. So off the back of that, and what they want to do is make sure that you're keeping hold of that data in the best possible way. So what you have to do is you have to join the ICO. So to join the ICO, you pay, it's another online subscription. It's £40 for the year. So, so far, we've talked about joining the property redress scheme. That's £100 a year. We've talked about joining the ICO, which is £40 a year. Now, you're going to need some uh, public liability insurance. Now, this is literally a case of if someone tries to bring a legal case against you. So, for argument's sake, you, they bought a property or they find that the property was there as, as described, etc., and they think that they, they've got a court case against you you may want to get some insurance. Well, should I say you may? It's kind of imperative that you get some insurance to cover your backside. Now, the average cost of this from what I've been doing, so it all depends on the value of the properties that you're going to transact. So if you're going to be looking at properties circa between 100 to 250,000 pounds, believe it or not, it's not going to be that great a deal. Now, with mine, I uh, transact properties up to five to ten million pounds. So I pay on average between three and five hundred pounds per year. But for if you're dealing with smaller uh, valued, uh, smaller property values, then it will be a lot less. Again, I can put you in contact with brokers that can do this, and it is again very simple. Fill out a few questionnaires, uh, which take the best part of ten minutes. The broker will go back, come back with a quote, and say yes, okay, you're happy with this quote. You say yes, and away it's done. It's literally a 10-minute process because the brokers that I put you in contact with, they've been dealing with lots of sources all over the country. So, so far, we've got the property redress scheme. We've got the ICO, uh, so property redress scheme, which is £100 a year, uh, uh, ICO, which is £40 a year, and on average, the, the insurance that we just talked about is about £300 a year. If you go to my kind of level of cover, it could be a lot less for properties values, which are a lot less. And then finally, one, which is probably the most time consuming at the lot, is becoming registered with anti-money laundering reg uh, regulations, which is AMLR. Now, the reason why I say that is because what you need to be doing is making sure that any investor that you're dealing with has got the correct funds in the correct place to ensure that they're not using your service to launder money. Um, and that's really quite straightforward. Again, it's an online session. It's an online application and in there they will ask it takes about half an hour so it's not a literally a five minute job it takes about half an hour uh they will ask you to pay a fee on average it's around 300 pounds for the year uh 300 pounds for the year i've been paying 300 pounds i think mine went up slightly this year because of the value of the properties that we were transacting and the number of transactions that we did. So I think it went up slightly, but on average, it's £300 a year. So let's have a recap. AMLR, £300. Uh, insurance around £300. PRS, which is about £140 for uh, ICO. So on average, from compliance point of view, it's going to cost you the best part of £800 for the year. Now, I'm going to put caveat into that because as part of my training, if you become a member of the Elite Property Tribe, I'm also going to perhaps get you to become a member of um, the Property Investor app. Now, if you're sourcing properties for the Property Investor app, we're currently liaising with some agents that are working. And then as a result of that, if you're now becoming an agent for the Property Investor app, you could actually work under my compliance, which means that you're not having to spend Eight hundred pounds. We're clarifying that over the next week, but you know, from what I understand, and everyone that I've spoken to, you'll be compliant under my compliance because you'll be the representative of the property investor app. Does that make sense? So let's get moving on. Another question: saturation. There's lots of deal sources out in the marketplace. Um, there's no question about that. There's lots of people teaching deal sourcing, whether they're teaching it in the correct manner or not, is questionable. 
you know, there's lots of people out there. And, you know, the reason why I can talk about this session and I, the reason why I can talk about this is because of the number of deals that I've done. I'm the owner of the Property Investor app, which is the first platform out there which has done anything like that. I've had to jump through so many hoops and red tape to be able to get my app onto the App Store. Because let's face it, I'm not an estate agent. I'm not a letting agent. I'm not an auction house. What am I? And this is what the App Store struggled to get their head around. So for me to get on the App Store, I've done something right. Now, in terms of deal sources, yes, there are lots of deal sources out there and lots of people, believe it or not, I could show you example after example of deal sources that are doing it wrong. I'm not saying this to put them down, but from a practice and from the way they operate, for me, is not the right way. So I've seen, I'm members of lots of WhatsApp groups, I'm members of lots of Facebook groups and some of the deals that I see, unfortunately, just not are not fit for purpose. Now, some people may turn around and say, Ash, oh, we've someone seen some of your deals. And, you know, to be fair, I had someone jump on one of my um, Instagram posts a couple of weeks ago, say, Ash, oh, I don't like your deals. And I thought, okay, that's fine. But my deals aren't going to suit everyone. Remember, I've got a database of over 100,000 property investors. And every day we sell deals. So is the market saturated with deal sources? There's lots of deal sources out there. Is it saturated? No, it's not. The reason why I say that is because a lot of the deal sources aren't doing it correctly. And therefore, I can pretty much guarantee that they're not getting deals over the line. Now, the deal sources that I work with and I train, I teach you how to do it properly so that when you've got a deal, you've appraised it in the correct manner, you're presenting the correct information. And as a result, you've got a much higher chance of selling your deal over someone that's trying to just whiz it through a WhatsApp group. I'm going to give you an example. Now, in my deals, you'll see that you've got the address. Well, big thing, you've got the address. How many deals have you come across on other forums where they don't even give you an address? They'll just say London, SW1, three bedroom, rent to rent. Rent is, let's say, £3,000 a month. Now, how can anyone do their research off that? Have you come across these deals? Give me a yes or no if you can. Give me a yes or no. So if you've come across a deal, I know lots of deal sources that put themselves out there and they say, London, SW3, £3,000 a month, will accept SA, 70% occupancy, uh, you're generating £1,000 a month. Well, what is that based on? At what figures have you based that on? How can I determine what those figures are? Now, in all my deals, you've got the address. So first thing, you can do your research on that address. You've got the postcode. And off the back of that, you can actually determine are the figures that I'm quoting in actual fact the same kind of figures and you do your own research on that. So when we talk about saturation, yes, there are lots of deal sources out there. There are a lot of chances out there. And you've got to remember that property is uh, an industry full of sharks that are people that are out there to do this for the quick buck. Now, the reason why I say that is because I've been doing this 23 years. Now, if I was out here for the quick buck, I would have been out this industry. I would have been called out on this industry a long time ago. So providing that you're trading ethically, providing that you're giving the right information and you're finding the right deals, you will stay in it for the long term. Does that kind of make sense? So Miri says, yes, I have, and they are terrible. Robert says, how do you protect your deal if you give out the address? Now, Robert, there are lots of ways that you can protect your address. So there are exclusivity methods that you can generate or you can do lots of ways that I can teach you how to get exclusivity to the deal so that even though you give out the address, you're still protected. There are ways that you do that, but obviously people don't know how to do that. And that's why if you see a deal where it does not have the address attached to it, there's a very high chance that they do not have exclusivity to it, hence why they're not providing the address. Now let's get moving on to it. Now, third question is how much time do I have to put into this? The biggest thing that lots of people ask is, Ash, um, I want to do this, but I want to make a quick win. How quickly can I get my first deal? Now, naturally, it's like driving a car. How long is it going to take you to pass the test? It all determines on how you interpret the information and how you implement the information. Because I can teach you what to do, but if you don't put it into practice, 
that will determine how long it's going to take you. Does that make sense? And the more times that you do it, the better you will become at it. The better you will become at it, the higher chance you have of success. Does that make sense? So this one, unfortunately, is a very open-ended question. I'd love to say that you're gonna spend one hour a night and off the back of that, you're gonna then be able to call agents or you're gonna be able to find vendors, you're gonna be able to negotiate the deal and you're gonna get it done. Now, it all depends on location. What location are you pitching? All depends on what strategy you decided to implement. So are you gonna go for the rent to rent, which, which are a lot quicker to transact? Lease options, a lot quicker to transact. If you're dealing with purchases, like properties to buy and investors to buy, then they may take a slight, slightly longer because the investor may wanna do the research. You're gonna to wanna to go and visit the property. They're gonna probably wanna get a surveyor out to it. So it may take slightly longer. But when it comes to how much time can you put into it, initially, the more time that you can put in into it to watch the modules that I've produced, the higher the chance of success. So I've created six modules, six modules, and each module is completely different. So we talk about HMOs, we talk about finding below market value deals, rent to rent deals, service accommodation deals, lease option deals, development opportunities. And so in each of these modules, it will teach you how to go direct to the vendor, how to go direct to, or, or how to even work with the agent. And the reason why I say that, and we're gonna come on to this shortly, is because you know, chasing a vendor is great, but that vendor will only have one deal. Whereas an agent will have 30 deals. So it's about working smarter, it's not about working harder. Yes, you're gonna get some great deals if you go direct to vendor. There's no reason why you can't do both because it's great if you get a vendor, because when you get a vendor, you get a better deal when you're with the vendor. So I'm gonna be teaching you how to go through the two different methods, how to go direct to vendor, how to go direct to the agent, and how to negotiate it. Now, how long will it take you to get your first deal? Now, believe it or not, I'd like to think that you're gonna get your first deal within the first month. It's a big ask and it's a big claim. I don't mind saying that, but the reason why I say that is because if you follow what I've got step by step, there's no reason why you won't succeed. I've made all the mistakes and all I've done is I've documented now what works. What works because the deals that we sell on a day-to-day -day basis is the thing that works. So people ask me pretty much quite often, oh Ash, what's the secret formula? There's no secret formula or what's the thing that sells the best. Now, if I knew that, I would literally be able to bottle that and sell it every day. Because let's face it, if everyone knew the kind of one property that everyone wants, everyone would only focus on that one style of property. So in an ideal world, you'd get a property which is 50% below market value. In an ideal world, you get a property which is generating over 1,500 pounds a month. In an ideal world, the property would be generating in excess of 30% return on investment. No. And in an ideal world, uh, the vendor is very distressed. You know, that's the ideal scenario. But let's face it, what's the chances of you finding properties 50% below market value every day? You'll probably get one of those, two, well, let's say two of those a year. So I would, don't want to sit here and say that you're gonna get property, or I'm gonna teach you how to find properties which are 50% below market value. That's not gonna happen. What we can do, we can find properties which have got great cash flow. We can look at properties which have got great opportunity, development opportunities. We can go direct to a vendor where we can actually then start to uh, create further opportunities within the opportunity. Does that make sense? So what I'm actually doing is teaching you how to become a more rounded property investor ask the right questions to get the better deal. Does that make sense? If I'm not making sense here, feel free to comment in the box. If you think that I am talking sense, give me a quick yes in the box. So in terms of getting your first deal, providing you know, in a plan, what I'd love to do is get your first deal with you within the first month. And what I'd be working with you closely to ensure that you get the first deal within the first month. Often when we talk about getting the first deal, getting something negotiated either with the vendor or the agent and then aiming to try and get shifted to investors within the first month. Now, next point that lots of people ask me is, 
will agents work with me? And they say, well, I've tried to call an agent and all they've done, they've shut me down and they're not going to want to work with me, believe it or not. Working with agents is actually the easiest part of the whole process. And the reason why I say that is because they're more motivated than in actual fact uh, vendors. The reason why I say that is because their motive is that they've got to generate fees. And the only way they can generate fees is by selling properties. Now, if you've got a, a mechanism or if you're part of a structure or a mechanism that can sell properties for them, then why won't they work for you now or work with you? Now, all I have to teach you is the right things to say. The right, when I say the right things to say, how many of you have actually called an estate agent and says, hi, my name's Robert. Uh, I'm looking, I'm a property investor. I'm looking for property investment opportunities. Really, I only want to touch the ones that you can't sell. Uh, I'm prepared to offer on it, uh, but it's going to be 25% below market value. Or I only want those opportunities which are really run down. I'd love to see it before you send it out to any of your other database. How many times have you said that? Because believe it or not, how many times has the estate agent actually heard that? How many times has the estate agent listened to you, literally, let's say, actively listening, um, where they literally probably put the phone down on the desk, wait for you to finish, and they go, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what, let me take your email address and I'll let you know if something comes up. The reality is, all they've done, they've just stuck you on the generic marketing email uh, mailing list, and you will see every opportunity that comes to you. Does that kind of sound familiar to you? Because guess what? You're asking the same thing that everyone else is asking for. You want that needle in the haystack. You want that deal. And guess what? You're not the only investor on their database. So they're not going to give you any preferential treatment. You've got no trading history with them. Why will they offer you that deal first? So do you see what makes me different here? We're starting to ask the right questions. We're starting to understand the motive behind these kind of companies. And as a result, I can show you email after email after email of agents going, Arsh, boom, I've got this, Arsh, I've got this, I've got this. And they call us day in, day out. And I want you to be in that same position where they're calling you and said, Robert, okay, we've got this. Um, have you got an investor for it? And that's what they do, because I don't proclaim to be the buyer. All I do is I say, guys, I've got some buyers, but in order for me to do that, I need to present it to them. And believe it or not, once you start to understand what I say to them and how I say it to them, you'll be surprised at how quickly they say, yes, OK, let's get moving. Let's get working together. Does that make sense? Give me again, again, a quicker yes or uh, or. I, I'm, I'm going to ask you the question for the guys that are on the webinar here. Am I making this sound too easy? Give me, a, you know, am I making this sound too easy? Because believe it or not, it's not actually hard. It's perhaps easy to me because it's second age to me. I've been doing this for 20 odd years. Now, what I want to do is actually make it second nature for you. The reason why I want to make it second nature for you is that the more conversations you have, the more fluent you will become in doing it. The more fluent you become in doing it, and the more practice that you have with it, the more chances that the agent's going to say, you know what, I spoke to Miri. I really like Miri. She really explained it really well and really simple. And therefore, I'm going to work with Miri. And the same with Darsha and the same with Robert. And Miri says, we just have to do it. Absolutely. You know, we can all talk about it. We can all talk about how great we want to be. But in order to achieve that greatness, we have to take some action. And the action will determine the result. So, will I be able to find deals in my area? And I'm going to badge this up with point number seven. Do I, can I work in every, any area? Now, I strongly suggest that when you start out, you don't work in your area. The reason being is that you're going to get it wrong initially. For the first week or so, you're going to get it wrong. So therefore, you don't want to call the area that you want to work in initially, because you're going to be saying the wrong things, uh, you're not going to be 100% fluent in what you're trying to do. And as a result, you may burn, not burn bridges, but you may get it wrong where you may not leave the best impression initially. And therefore, I suggest you work in an area where you're not 100% interested in it. But if a deal comes, yeah, then great. If it doesn't, then at least you know that it's not going to harm you. Does that make sense? So, yes, 
you can look in uh, with deal sourcing. It's a beautiful thing because deal sourcing allows you to see the opportunity first. That's what I really like about deal sourcing. Now, I would not have seen a lot of the deals that I've purchased in my own portfolio if I did not have the skill to deal source. Now, the reason why I say that is because I bought properties and I'm going to give you the examples that I ran for the last couple of weeks. There's deals in there that I would not have seen if I did not have now had to do deals. Now, one of the deals, it allowed me to generate over £100,000 in profit. But that was a direct to vendor deal. But if I didn't know how to approach it and how to package it and how to structure it, I would never have seen that opportunity. So, yes. You can find deals in your area and I strongly suggest that when you become fluent and you understand and you're competent in, yes, you work in your area. Now, off the back of that, you can, you're not governed. So let's just imagine now, like an estate agency like Connells, they're governed to work within their area. They can only, Wolverhampton Connells can only work in Wolverhampton. Birmingham can only work in Birmingham. You as a deal sourcer, you've got no strings attached to you. You can go and work wherever you want. One day you could be finding a deal in Sunderland. Tomorrow you could be finding a deal in Cornwall. Day after that, you could be in Scunthorpe. I'm just shouting out random towns and cities here. You could be in you know, Durham, wherever it may be. Wherever you find a property, that's where you go and start finding opportunities. So yes, you can work wherever you want. What I will be doing is that for everyone that work, uh, comes along on the Elite Property Tribe, I'll be actually giving you areas to start with. And off the back of that, I'll say, well, here's what we need to be looking for. Here's what we need to be looking for in these locations. Now let's start working to see what opportunities come across. Does that make sense? Now, it's all very well. Point number eight is it's all very well finding opportunities. Now, deal sourcing is like a double-edged sword. We can have the greatest deals in the world, but if we've got no one to sell them to, the deals are pointless. Equally, we can have the greatest investors in the world, but we've got no deals, our investors are pointless. Would you agree? So we have to pretty much balance it. We have to pretty much balance it so that we've got the right balance here. So we've got properties coming in one way and we've got investors coming in the other way and we match it and we've got it. Because let's face it, having deals, just imagine now a state agent, they've got all these properties in the windows, but they've got no one to buy it. It's pointless. And ultimately, they've got lots of, and now at the moment, letting agents, they're struggling because they've got lots of people wanting to rent properties, but they've got nothing to let because there's such a high demand. Every property that comes along gets let very quickly. So they're struggling at the moment to find stock. Estate agents at the moment, in actual fact, they're seeing a bit of a slump in their sales. So they may actually have surplus stock, but they may not have surplus investors. So this is where you come in and you bridge the gap. So uh, there are a couple of questions coming in on the webinar. I'll answer them in a minute. Um, okay, so can I, right, and then we'll come on, we'll come on to the next couple of questions because the next couple of questions actually correlate to the property investor app, uh, sorry, not the property investor app, the elite property tribe and what the program actually entails. So let's get moving on. So let's have a look at the opportunity. So believe it or not, guys. Did you know that when we talk about saturation, uh, when we're talking about working with agents, did you know that there's an actual fact in excess of 53,000 estate agents in the UK? When we talk about uh, estate agents, we're talking those that list on right and exuberant on the market. We're not even talking about all the independents as well. On top of that, we've got uh, right move alone has over 800,000 properties for sale in the UK. So when we talk about saturation, even though these training companies may be churning out property investors or property deal sources, chances are that they're never going to be able to touch 53,000 estate agents. So take that, bear that in mind because it's an absolutely huge opportunity out there. Now, when I said earlier that estate agents, will they work with you on screen right now? I get an agent called Tom. He emails me pretty much almost like every week and he goes, Arsh, oh, I've got this property. Now, the email that is put on screen, admittedly, this is uh, I think it was last year, he goes, I've got two HMOs on our books that we can't sell. Not sure why, as they're great investments with guaranteed tenants from the university every year. The vendor is uh, indicated that he wants £250,000, potentially if they were both 
sold. If not, then it would need two hundred sixty thousand pounds if they were sold individually. He goes, and then he goes on to say, "Will you list them on the Property Investor app?" And he goes, "I've got more properties if we can sell these." And guess what? We sold them. Now, what's in it for the agent? The agent will make their money from the seller. Now, as a deal sourcer, I make my money from the buyer. So let's look at this from a logical point of view. How much money or how much commission has the agent actually lost by working with me? The reality is he's not actually lost any commission. He's actually made commission because as that property sits on his books, it's not making him anything. So the longer it's sat there, the more chance it's not going to sell. So he needs to be able to put it out to as many people as possible. And this is what I can offer. I can offer to put it out in front of 100,000 property investors instantly. Now, for those that work with me, this is what I have the ability to work with. So Rex, who is on Instagram, says, do you mentor people? Believe it or not, Rex, if you can, join the webinar that I'm running live now. So quickly click on my profile. We've got a live webinar. And this is exactly what we're covering now. So feel free to watch it. Uh, if not, register and I'll send you the recording. So it's a win-win all round. The agent makes money from the seller. We make money from the buyer. And it's a win-win all round. Does that make sense? So AJ, I know that you've uh, typed in some questions. Um, we're going to go through these in a second. Now, it's your turn to ask questions. So here we go. It's perfect. So AJ has asked a question. He goes, how do I analyze a deal and deem it to be good? Now, believe it or not, I've actually got tools and spreadsheets, which in actual fact, allow you to punch in some numbers and it will tell you whether that property is producing a decent cash flow, whether it's producing a good return on investment. And off the back of that, you should be able to determine very quickly, is it a good deal, yes or no? And we'll look at it from lots of points of view. We'll look at it from point of view, is it bricks and mortar value? Is it a commercial value? We'll look at it from point of view. Is it cash flow producing? Is it high cash flow? Or is it low cash flow? Is it producing a decent return on investment? Now, bear with me a second, guys. Someone's just popped to the door. Sorry, just quickly checked. Nothing, nothing important. But so this is what the calculator will allow you to do. So I've created what is called a cash flow calculator. It allows you to analyze the deal very quickly. So the other question that AJ, uh, uh, sorry, Robert has asked a question is that, do you visit all the properties? Now, if it's local to me, then I don't mind visiting the property now, but if I'm based in Wolverhampton and the property's in Sunderland, then I'm not gonna go and visit the property. And I don't mind saying that because it depends where the property has come from. If it's come from an agent, believe it or not, all the information will already have been provided to me by the agent. That would have included uh, images, it would have been floor plans, it would have been descriptions, and I can work a lot of my basis off desktop research from there. Now, if it's your first time and you're starting out uh, and you want to go and view some properties, there's nothing wrong with you doing that. Just be conscious of your time. Because if you're based, let's say, for argument, say in Oxford, and you're going to go all the way to uh, Sunderland to view a property that's going to be a day out of your business on top of that it's going to cost you a lot of money going back and forth to different locations so just be very conscious and wary of that does that make sense so I don't in essence uh, if I need to view it or if I feel like I need to view it there are services out there where you can pay approximately 30 pounds and they will go and view the property for you and then they can provide you with videos images floor plans etc so don't be a busy fool. If I'm only, I don't say the word fool in the in the room manner, but don't be a busy fool. Work smart, don't work hard. Does that make sense? So AJ's asked another question. So how do I find serious investors who want to buy deals and how should I talk to them? Now, remember what I said about this double-edged sword. You have to have deals in order to talk to the investors. You have to have investors to talk to about the deals. So first thing I would suggest is that you can start going out and meeting investors. So there's lots of ways that you do investors, whether you do it virtually, whether you meet um, investors, whether you meet them virtually or whether you meet them in person. Now, I'll teach you how to go and meet them in person. There are lots of different ways, lots of different techniques that you should be using to meet property investors. Now, the easiest ones that we can mention is that you can add loads of people off Facebook groups and et cetera. And that's easy, that's very basic, and that's a very generic. Everyone's doing it. And you know, everyone's out there 
creating lead generators. In essence, for argument's sake, lots of people out there um, putting deals that don't actually exist. Let's say, for argument's sake, they'll say London, property worth 300, uh, you've got it for 150, if it's of interest, message me. And then lots of people will say, oh, I'm interested, I'm interested. The reality is the deal doesn't exist. What they're doing is that they're generating interest. Believe it or not, I generally find that investors that are online are much harder to work with than investors that I meet in person. Uh, so it is good to go and have these cups of coffees and meet these people. Again, it's time. But then, yeah, there are two ways that you look at this, AJ, and it's a great question because um, uh, there's two strategies. You can have a list of 10 investors, and those 10 investors may give you a very specific target of what they're looking to achieve in their property. So it may be that they don't want to spend more than £150,000. They want it to be like a five-bed HMO. They want it to generate over £800 a month cash flow. So you've got very much a very targeted uh, shopping list as to what you can generate or what you need to be on the look for. Now, off the back of that, you get a deal. You now go to that investor and say, I found it. Now, the only issue that I have with that is that unless he's actually put some money down or he's got some skin in on it, he could literally just be sending you out looking for stock with no intention to purchase. He may say, well, if you get something, let me know and I'll have a look at it. And that's generally, I don't do that. Generally, what I'd rather do is that I would generate a load of property investors and pretty much like an auction. Now, can you imagine that an auction company, they don't go out and say to them, guys, okay, tell me what you're after and we'll go and find it for you. When have you ever heard an auction company say that? What they do, they generate a load of stock, they throw it in a magazine and they say, guys, here's a stock, come and look at it, you want it, here it is. And that's what I generally tend to do. And the same with estate agents. How many times have you heard an estate agent say, oh, tell us what you want and we'll let you know about it. No, they say, here's a stock. If you're interested, come and talk to us. And that's exactly the same style of approach. So it's a cat amongst the pigeons kind of process. And that's how I operate. So, you know, and I find that it's a numbers game. With uh, properties, it is a numbers game. There are going to be some properties that you sell that fall through. That's all part of the process. Not every property is going to complete but you can still make money from deals that haven't completed. So Darshan says, how much money can I realistically start out with no sourcing? Can I make realistically starting out with no sourcing experience? Now, Darshan, great question. And this is one that I probably should have put in the common, uh, commonly asked questions. Now, believe it or not, you can actually, uh, I don't want you to turn around, uh, Darshan, and say, I'm going to smash 50 deals in one year. That's never going to happen. Let's be realistic. You don't know what you don't you don't know what you're starting yet. You don't know how much time you're going to put into it. Let's work on the basis that you're going to get one deal a month. One deal a month is very achievable. And if you work on the basis that the sourcing fee on one deal is between three and five grand a month, three or five grand a deal, depending on the style of deal, depending on the location, depending on the cash flow, depending on the discount, you know, you can work on the basis of between three and five grand. Now, if you're splitting that with, let's say, for argument, say with me, by selling it onto the property investor app, then in essence, it's 50% of that fee. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, so Darshan's coming with another question. Aren't there a lot of time wasters and tie kickers? Absolutely. Absolutely. But let's face it, it all comes down to the deal that you find. Now, we sell deals, and believe it or not, we won't put our deal, we won't allow someone to go and view one of our deals until they've actually put money down on it. Now, I know that we've got one of the guys on here, and I'm not name shaming or anything, but I've got a guy called Nav, and he came to me and goes, Oh, I want to view this property. And I turned around to him and said, Nav, let's see your money. Now, he turned around to me and said, Oh, can I pay you after I've viewed it? I said, No chance. And that's my stance with every property because, again, I want to know that the person that's going to view it is the person that's got skin on the game. I want to know that they've got some funds. They're not going to go and try to kick because let's face it, I could very easily arrange 20 or 30 people to go and view every property, but that's 20 or 30 people that have not paid anything. That's also 20 or 30 people that are then going to try and go direct to my vendor and do a deal. Whereas here, I'm taking one person's money and I know he can't cut me out of the equation because he's already paid me. I've already been paid. Does that make sense? So 
I've done a lot of research from the outset. So when people say, can you be cut out of the deal? I generally can't be cut out of the deal because I've been paid before they even go to the property. So are you sourcing, e.g. selling rent to rental SA? Believe it or not, Miri, I'm actually sourcing all different types of properties. So I'm sourcing below market value deals. I'm sourcing rent to rent deals. I'm sourcing lease option deals. I'm sourcing service accommodation deals. I'm sourcing land deals. I'm sourcing industrial deals. I'm sourcing commercial deals. So I'm looking at every different property type and we're going to go on to this in a second because it's great timing because the next slide was no need to be a one trick pony. Don't limit yourself to one different one style of deal. So let, let's go back to the estate agent. In an estate agent's window, do they only sell two bedroom terrace properties? No, they don't. They sell two bedroom terrace properties, they sell one bedroom flats, they sell three bedrooms attached, four bedrooms attached. The reason being is that they've got different people trying to buy different styles of property. Property investors are exactly the same. Some property investors only want rent to rent deals because they may not have the cash to buy a property yet. Some property investors will only buy below market value deals because they want to recycle their deposit time and time again by refinancing. We've got other property investors that are looking for HMOs and they want cash flow deals. So lots of different style of properties and lots of different pockets to kind of meet. Does that make sense? So, so uh, Suraprint, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to read this from a distance. So Suraprint says, how long on average does it take to sell a deal on the app? Believe it or not, it all depends on the deal. Very same like an estate agent. How long does it take for them to sell a property? If it's a great property, believe it or not, I put on the app on Thursday, I believe it was, a lease option on an eight-bed uh, eight hotel. Uh, I think it's somewhere up north. Sorry, we I see a lot of deals, so I don't remember addresses. I put on an eight-bed lease option, ho, uh, eight-bed hotel on a lease option, a three-year lease option on the app. On Thursday, we sold it by Friday morning. Ultima, uh, on, on another note, I put a HMO for sale on Monday, and we still haven't sold it. So I'm not going to proclaim that we sell everything, but again, it's a numbers game. How many times in an auction do they sell every lot? No, they don't. Does an estate agent sell every property that they've got in their books? No, they don't. Otherwise, they wouldn't be feeding them to me. So I'm not going to sit here and say that we sell everything. But what I am going to say is that we've pretty much got a very good chance of selling most things that we put out there. So I'm not here to try and paint it so that we, you know, we do or everything and anything. Um, okay, so Robert says, when negotiating with a vendor, do you inform them that you'll be assigning the property? Absolutely. So the one thing that you should never do is proclaim to be the buyer if you're not the buyer, because ultimately that is your that's going to be the start of your downfall, and you'll find that they will pull that property away from you. So give me an example. There's a property that we put up on the app. Um, I think it was two weeks ago, and we sold it to an investor, and uh, the investors, believe it or not, based in Qatar. And when we went to, we had to go and do a virtual viewing because obviously he's, ba he's not flying in from Qatar, so he wanted to do a video viewing. And because the owner didn't know that the investor was from Qatar, they got a little bit nervous. So you need to be very transparent about, about all this information from the outset. So when you're speaking to the vendor, you need to let them know that you're not the buyer and you're potentially going to find them a buyer. And it's not costing them a penny. That's the best thing about it. It's not costing them a penny. So hopefully that helps, Robert. So are you sourcing assisted sales? Absolutely, Darshan. Yes, we find assisted sales all over the country. So assisted sales are great properties because, again, it serves a certain purpose within the property industry. Does that make sense? Okay, so AJ says, how do I ensure investors don't find my deal other than, uh, other than hiding the address? Also, uh, the picture sometimes they can trace the source of the picture online. You know what, AJ, there are lots of ways to do that. Now, what I'm going to say to you is don't sweat the small stuff. You're thinking about things that may not actually even happen. Because remember, I've been doing this a long time. I have to make sure that people pay us before they try and find your property. So don't sweat the small stuff. Concentrate on finding the deals. I'll concentrate on getting them sold. So here's a couple of properties. So the reason why I like deal sourcing, because... I get to see all the best deals first. When I say I get to see all the best deals, the ones that I source, I get to see the best deals first. Believe it or not, I've actually purchased some of the deals that some of my sources bought to me. I thought, oh, I like the look of this. Yeah, you know what? In actual fact, 
I'll give you your fee for this. And I've done that many times. So first property was in Wolverhampton. So this was a deal that I got direct to vendor. Uh, believe it or not, it's actually bought to me by my, uh, it was actually bought to me by my, I think it was my accountant. And he came to me, he goes, Ash, we've got this person, they want to sell, they need to sell quickly. Can you do something with them? I said, absolutely. So they gave me the deal. Uh, they wanted approximately 300,000 for it. I thought we could add value to it. So we went off and got planning. Instead of it being a four bed detached, we've got planning for a seven bed detached. We sold that deal for 435 grand. We gave the owner the 300. We kept the additional 135,000. Now that's a needle in a haystack. You're not going to make 100 grand on each deal. That is a needle in a haystack. They'll probably come you know, once a year, once every couple of years. I've got another deal coming through at the moment, you know, on the office building that I recently acquired where I acquired it or got the option on it at 520. We've now got it valued at 1.2 million. So in essence, I'm going to make over 500,000 pounds off that one deal. But again, these are needle in haystacks. They don't come along. If I could find deals like this, I wouldn't be doing deals where I'm just making five grand every day. I'd focus on the 100 grand deals. But if I knew where I could find 100 grand deals every day, you know, it'd be it'd be a piece of cake. Does that make sense? So Darshan says, can I source a deals remotely from anywhere in the world? I'm going to I'm going to talk to you about that in a second, Darshan. Let's let's keep hold of that question. So I made 103,000 pounds just from this property alone. Second property was a development opportunity in Dudley, where the vendor we did an assisted sale on this. So I think Darshan, you asked about assisted sale on screen right now is an assisted sell. She had a piece of land. She didn't have the money to do anything with it. Now, I went off and I got some professional advice on this piece of land. So we agreed that 80,000 pounds is what the vendor wanted. And I said to her, well, if you give me time with it, allow me to get my architect to run some drawings on this. And then if we can sell it with the benefit of the new drawings, if you allow me to sell it, anything over the 80,000 pounds, we'll do a 50-50 on. And she goes, perfect by me. She goes, I was happy with 80 grand. You're gonna give me more than 80 grand. It's a win-win all round. And that's exactly what we did. We got off, we got some drawings in place. We actually sold the piece of land in auction. Well, it sold prior to auction. We sold it for 120,000 pounds. We put all our costs into the contract. Now she walked away with 80 grand plus 50% of the uplift. Now there's 40,000 pound uplift. So she made an additional 20,000 pounds. So she walked away with 100, I walked away with 20, and I got all my costs back for my professional fees. And it really was really easy to do that. So Darshan, your question about assisted sales, can it be done? Absolutely, there it is on screen. Third property was a property that was sold, uh, offered to me via an estate agent. And they go, oh, I've got this property. Um, are you interested? I went and viewed it straight away and I saw the value in that property straight away and I offered the full market value for it. I didn't even I didn't even try negotiating on it because I saw value in a property. So sometimes it is worth offering the full market value for it, but you need to know what you're looking for. So this property already had four flats in. I managed to convert it into six flats. Uh, I got planning for it whilst we're going through the purchase process. In actual fact, I now got that property that I purchased for 180. I spent, I think it was 150 grand on the conversion cost. So it owed me to, uh, to 330, 330. I got it valued at 600,000. So, and I managed to refinance, get all my money back out. So can you see the different types of deals that I'm doing? Now, Darshan has asked a question about, can you do this anywhere in the world? Now, on screen right now, there's a young gentleman called Rahil. I, I talk about Rahil a lot because Rahil's an, I don't say an exceptional case, but here's a person that's based on the opposite side of the world that really wanted to make property work for him. So Rahil is based in Saudi Arabia, very active family man. That's his reason why. He works 12 hours a day as an engineer. He spends one hour a night searching for deals. And on average, he sources between three and four deals a month. And the average fee that it generates is between three to five thousand pounds. And off the back of that, he's also sourced properties that he's kept as a rent to rent portfolio, which are all fully managed. So he's not even in the UK. He's based in Saudi Arabia. All done whilst in a different country in a different time zone. Now, you've got to be very 
you're going to be very focused if you're in a different country because let's face it english is not the first language different time zone he's working around a very commanding job so he managed to put this aside and he managed to make it work so darshan going back to your question can you resource remotely absolutely remember he based in saudi arabia he can't physically go and view properties he's not going to jump on a plane and come and view them he didn't have that time he didn't have that luxury so in actual fact for everyone else that's in the uk i've got to ask you the question you've got no excuse you've got time you on the, you're in the same time zone you're actually in the same country you actually speak the same language whereas this guy has had to learn all that and is still smashing three to four deals every month so darshan does that kind of answer your question so uh Okay, so Umar says, how much do you charge for the viewing fee? So I don't physically view them. So there are companies out there. There are companies called Viewba, which is like Uber, but View, V-I-E-U, so V-I-E-W-B-E-R, Viewba. And they cost on average around 30 to 35 pounds to go and physically view a property for you or take images for you and then email it back to you. So that's a guy. Um, that's Rahil based in another country. Now let's look at Craig. Craig Webb based in the West Midlands. He's a property sourcer and he actually, in his first month, did eight deals. He was hungry. And I taught him how to find eight deals within one month. Now, every property that he looked at was completely different. So he looked at HMOs, he looked at blocks of apartments, he looked at uh, HMOs in different locations. Um, and off the back of that, he also looked at a portfolio of properties. And these are all properties that we listed on the app and we actually sold. So they weren't just properties that he listed, these were actually sold and these were money in the bank. And we can, I can show you property after property, example after example of deals that we've done all over the country with different sources that I've taught and I've shown them how to do it correctly. I've shown, when we talk about the word correctly, it's about how to get the right information, how to make sure that we've got so much information that an investor goes, yes, I want it, I like it, I want it. So uh, one of the questions that have come in, so Super Prince has said, Rahil's example, uh, can rent-to-rent -rent deals still be profitable after using a management company? Absolutely, because you, not everyone wants to manage. Let's face it, he's based in Saudi Arabia. He can't manage rent-to-rent -rent based in the UK. Let's face it, if there's a property and there's a room that's vacant, how is he going to do the viewing? It's impossible. So he used the management company and off the back of that, they were still making money. So because you've got to just factor in the cost of management when you're making your offer to the owner. Does that make sense? So question by AJ. So what are the three big deals you've done and how did you find it? I found some of your deals very inspiring. Thank you, AJ. So deals wise, I could talk to you about deals all day long. So uh, in February this year, I bought an office block. It's a office block in Wolverhampton. I've talked about this, I think, a lot. I don't think I've talked about it a lot on uh, webinars, but I've wrote about it in magazines. So a vendor was looking, I was looking just to rent an office in Wolverhampton. Um, I started looking and then when I went to have a look at one of the properties, uh, I met the owner and he just happened to mention to me that he was lo also looking to sell the building. We negotiated a deal uh, pretty much there and then where I was going to lease the building off him for three years initially. The building was a little bit run down. Uh, he wanted 600,000 for the building. We negotiated down to 525. Now off the back of that, I've now got the lease of the building for three years. Uh, we've structured the purchase price at 525. Um, with that property in particular, I have had to put down a bit of a deposit, so I've put down £100,000, but he wanted the certainty of the sale, so it's not your traditional lease option, it's more like an assisted sale. Now, off the back of that, I've now gone off and spent some money on converting, or not converting, but just renovating the property, bringing it up to a much better standard. Now, as a result of that, I've actually had that property valued at £1.2 million. I've increased the rents. It's got 26 offices in place. Uh, we had lots of tenants in there paying low rents. We had lots of tenants paying all-inclusive rents. 
uh, we had lots of issues surrounding the wiring of the building and you know the the general management of the building now off the back of that I've now had that value property valued at 1.2 million pounds I'm now going to exercise my option at the 525,000 and then off the back of that I'm then going to refinance based on a 1.2 million pound valuation I'm going to get all my money back out I could actually get a lot more money out of it so are there any pitfalls with deal sourcing so sorry AJ hopefully that's one of my that's one of my biggest wins other than that I've, I've shown you the example previously of the one that we made over a hundred thousand um, pounds I can talk to you about deals after deals where we've made fifty thousand seventy thousand ninety thousand yeah and these are deals that I don't own I've not I've literally just got the deal I've added value and I've sold it on to another investor so I've not actually physically had to buy the property I can show you examples where I've actually bought the property and I've added so much value and I've sold them again um, so loads of different loads of different deals that I could talk to you about so Miri said is that an option agreement that you had with the vendor yes there's an option agreement in there that uh, within three years I have to exercise the option but because I've already paid them a hundred thousand pounds that also acts towards the the transaction on top of that we also put in the agreements that if the property increases in back because the mortgage was on a capital repayment mortgage in actual fact uh, we any debt that we pay down on the mortgage over the three years also goes towards the purchase of the property as well so it's a little bit more intricate in the detail and I could talk to you about two hotels that I recently acquired in Blackpool. Um, so I could talk to you about deal after deal. So if you want, I could run a session just on deals alone. And I think you'd be your mind would be blown by the number of deals that we do. So Darshan says, are there any pitfalls with deal sourcing? Absolutely none. And I say that with 100% transparency because let's face it, you're going to go out and you're going to meet a vendor you're going to speak to them and say that you've got their you've got they've got a property that you want they want to sell you're going to put it up on a platform you're going to try and sell it worst case scenario absolute worst case scenario the property doesn't sell now you utilize this as your then opportunity to go and now renegotiate with the vendor best case scenario it sells he's made money you've made money everyone wins worst case scenario it doesn't sell and you have to go back to uh, the vendor. Let's face it, when an estate agent, when an estate agent goes to value a property, can they guarantee a sale of that property? No, they can't. When an auction company comes and says, we're gonna put your property into an auction, can they guarantee that it's gonna sell? No, they can't, exactly the same. The difference here is that you're not incurring any costs. So it is pretty much, I call this risk-free business. Uh, so Robert says, can you customize a standard option to suit any deal? Absolutely. So every deal is different. Every vendor is different. Every vendor has their own pain. Every vendor has their own motivation. You can structure that deal accordingly. There's no such thing as a one size fits all. Do not be that one trick pony that tries to mold that trying to put a square peg into a round hole. It doesn't work. Be fluid, be like water, be like water. If you can be like water and you can uh, transact any transaction, you will win, everyone. I've got a great saying that the most strategic will always win. The most strategic will be the most successful. The one that can adapt to change and adapt to the scenario and read the room will be the one that wins. So uh, like that Bruce Lee, yeah like that bruce lee whatever yeah whatever bruce lee said yeah i'm sure it is like be like bruce lee so again every deal is a mixture of below market value deals full market value deals rent to rent opportunities lease option opportunities and again some of these deals may come to you direct from vendors i know some of these deals may come to you from agents and that's believe it or not that's okay and um, some of these deals may actually come to you from other deal sources in some of these whatsapp group which reminds me now you're on this call call me tomorrow let's have a chat because I know that you'll have deals that you've not sold and vice versa let's have a chat so again I could talk to you about deals all night long but let's get moving on you want more case studies go and check them out go and have a look on the app you can see that we've got over 200 properties 
on the app that we've negotiated, we've packaged, we've got ready to sell or we have sold. Now, let's get down to business. The Elite Property Tribe, the reason why I'm telling you all this is because I've created a program called the Elite Property Tribe. We actually start next week. So this is the end of the session. This is the end of the series. I've run four webinars now where I taught you all about deal sourcing and all the different types of deals that you can do. Now, I've created a program which is an online six module online training program. And in there, it's no fluff. It is very much a case of you have seen the kind of deals that I've been talking about. I want to show you how to do those kind of deals. So looking at all the different type of opportunities, below market value deals, rent to rent deals, lease option deals, HMO deals, service accommodation deals, and development opportunities. Now, in each of the modules, we're going to be showing you, so module one is below market value. Module two is rent to rent. Module three is lease option. Module four is HMO. Module five is service accommodation. Module six is development. So. In each module, it's broken down into mini modules. So I haven't actually, believe it or not, I've got a, there's little bits that we've got to finish off on each of the modules. But in each of the modules, I teach you how to find them. And then we start looking at different kinds of approaches. Are you going to go direct to the vendor and try and find them? Are you going to go to an agent and try and find them? How to actually transact them? How to speak to the vendors about them? Where are you going to find them? Then we're going to start talking about how to negotiate them and how to create win-win scenarios. Remember, if you are if you try and put that square peg into the round hole, you're not going to create it. Now, what I want to do in actual fact is teach you how to become fluid and actually how to create win-win scenarios. Because if you can do that, you will win every time. And the, the biggest thing with this program is that I actually give you all the contracts, all the spreadsheets, everything, all the legal documents that you require. So you don't have to go off and start spending thousands of pounds and creating it. I'm giving you the modules. I'm telling you what to do. I'm telling you how to do it. I'm telling you where to find them. I'm giving you the documents for it. And this is for all six modules. So again, below market value deals, rent to rent deals, lease option deals, HMO deals, service accommodation deals, development opportunities. Now, uh, earlier this week, I actually took on another four bed HMO uh, on a rent to rent, which is on a five year rent to rent deal where I paid no rent up front. I paid no deposit. I actually got a month rent free. And off the back of that, I've managed to tenant three of the rooms, which means that when the rent is due now to the landlord on the, I think it's the 1st of June, where are we in the May yet? 1st of June. I've actually got that property generating cash flow from day one so that. It's, we've not got no void periods in it whatsoever. I teach you how to do this. It really is a simple. That property is going to generate anywhere between 800 to 1,000 pounds a month cash flow. If you calculate that over a five year period, it's going to generate over 60,000 pounds in cash flow. And it's a property that's cost me nothing to acquire. So going back to the Elite Property Tribe, it's six easy to follow modules. Before I had a program which was 52 modules, I felt like 52 modules was far too many modules. I've condensed it into six modules so that you can follow it and get it working straight away. On top of that, every fortnight on a Monday, so starting from tomorrow, we're going to have a live deal clinic. When we say live deal clinic, if you've got a property, you're not 100% sure how to structure it, bring it to the clinic. Off the back of that, we will structure it together whether I need to speak to the vendor with you live on the call or whether you, you want me to tell you what to do and what to say and how to do it. And on some of the deal clinics, I will actually randomly pick a property that we'll find off a platform. I will find the vendor and I will call that vendor there and then right in front of you. So I've got no shame in someone telling me, Ash, you know, I'm going to swear here. So apologies. Ash, piss off. It's Monday night. I've got no shame in that. But on the other scenario, best case scenario, I can talk to you and you can watch some of my videos where the actual fact said, Osh, I like it. Yeah, OK, let's do a deal. And I've done the deal with them on the phone there and then. And this will all be live training. This is stuff that no one else will teach you. This is stuff that no one else will actually bother to try and teach you because they're worried of being rejected on the call. I've got no fear of that. If they tell me to get lost on the call, I'll say, thank you very much for your time. I'm, I'm glad we had that call. Do you mind if I follow up with you in a month if you haven't sold? 
whereas other people won't because they'll be they'll be worried about the rejection that their training isn't working but i will convert that lead and i've done it time and time again to show you how you can be doing it so i'm doing the things that i'm showing you practically so i suppose the difference between me and other trainers they all teach you the theory i'm doing it practically with you on a day-to-day -day basis so as part of the training you can come and shadow me in my office so in my office in wolverhampton you've got the ability to come and spend the day with me in my office you get to sit opposite me i get to listen to your calls i get to hear what you're saying what you're not saying and what we need to do to tweak it so if they're not jumping down your throat and say yes let's work together that they will be by the end of the day you get access so if you can't get into the office with me and you've got a deal and you want to move quickly on it you've got the ability to book a 10 minute call with me now that 10 minute call is specific to that property so before you book that call i need you to send me the property i need to be able to look at it so that when we do speak i know exactly what we're talking about so it's very structured these calls are i want to make the most out of 10 minutes as well as that you've got access to obviously all the other videos that i've got on my platform so it is specifically you've got your own login and then off that i can see what videos you've watched so if you turn around to me and say oh i can't make this work i'm going to say well let's have let's have a look at what videos you've actually watched how much time have you actually put into this so you want me to kick your backside i will definitely do that so if you want some accountability i'm going to make you accountable you want this to work i'm going to make it work for you but you have to put some work in don't think it's all going to be Arsh is going to do it all for me. No, it's you're going to do the work. I'm going to kick up the backside to make sure it's working. As well as that, yeah, in the EPT WhatsApp group. So that's general chit chat, telling you when the webinars are, etc. So we are very involved with you. Plus, I've got to mention contracts, templates, spreadsheets, all there. You've got them all there. So uh okay so i'm going to come back to your second uh, question in a second mike and also your question in a second in darshan so once we've got you fluent the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to, going to get you into a hotel conference room in wolverhampton or it might actually be my office in wolverhampton depends on numbers and what we're going to do we're going to spend a day do you have you ever watched the film wolf and wall street and i want you on the phones getting deals done vendor says yes let's sell it Agent says, yes, let's sell it. So we're gonna try and get you a day looking for deals, a day speaking to vendors and agents, a day appraising deals, a day calculating return on investment and yields, a day looking for hotspots so that you know where to look for and how to get the, some of the greatest deals. As well as that, you get to communicate and build some bonds with the other EPT members. So that date will be in June, 2023. And that date will then be determined how quickly you can get through the modules because there's no point you coming on the day if you've not done the modules so i'm just going to put this out there that it is a mentorship program it is an accountability program because i'm going to be by your side if you've got a question i'm going to be there to answer it if you've got a problem i'm going to be there to help if you've got an issue that with a vendor and you can't structure it i'm going to be there to actually do that call with you you're going to have my personal whatsapp number you're going to have my personal mobile number you're going to be in a whatsapp group with me and off the back of that, I want to see you succeed. The reason why I want to see you succeed, I'm very clear, I need you to bring in deals. When you bring in deals, we both make money. Does that make sense? So that's my motive. Now, the cost of the program. There is a cost. And this is one of the questions from uh, Tab. Sorry if I pronounce that wrong. I'm trying to read it from a distance. Cost of the program is £3,000 for the year. Uh, £3,000 for the program. Now, there are two ways to pay. You can either pay in one payment, which is £3,000, you get access to the whole programme immediately. Or you can pay three monthly payments, which is three monthly payments of £1,000, which is the same amount. And you get the first two modules re released immediately and the others will be drip fed every month. So if you can pay up front, obviously there's a benefit. And then on top of that, for those that actually take action, I will actually give you access to previous version of the elite property tribe, the previous version of the elite property tribe which means that you get access to the full 52 module program as well immediately so you're actually in actual fact we were charging five thousand pounds for that course you actually get two for the price of one so mike has asked a question so before we go any further someone says what well, how do we join so 
to join the Elite Property Tribe, I'm actually going to copy these links and I'm going to put these in the chat. So if you're watching on the webinar, if you go to the chat section, and I will put those links there. You've got them there. So there's a couple of questions that have come in. So a question from Mike who says, can you set this, uh, can you do this from Spain remotely? What type of legal setup do you need to do this? Believe it or not, Mike, uh, deal sourcing is a completely unregulated industry. So you don't need to have any legal setup, whether you decide to set up as a sole trader, whether you decide to set up as a limited company uh, part or limited company structure, that's completely up to you. Um, if you're going to trade deals through the Property Investor app, then there's no difference in what you do. It all depends on your tax structure. That's the only difference. So can you do it remotely? There's no difference between you doing it in Spain or Raheel doing it from Saudi Arabia. Does that make sense? So yes, you can do it from Spain. In actual fact, you've got benefits from doing it from Spain because Rahil was doing it from Saudi Arabia where there was quite a large time difference. In Spain, you're not that far apart. So I hope that helps. So uh, Darshan says, how does a MLR work when working with yourself? So it's a bit of a gray area, don't mind saying that. But if you're working with me, because you'll be selling it to my investors through my network, when the investor buys it from me, they're buying it from the Property Investor app. They're not buying it from Darshan. So technically speaking, you don't need to be AMLR registered. And if when you, what I may do in actual fact, set you up with an email address from the Property Investor app so that when you're dealing with, uh, when you're dealing with your customers, it will come from Darshan at propertyinvestorapp.co.uk. That's something that we're working with with my IT guys. So that's something that we're gonna iron out this week. So what I'm saying is that you could utilize our AMLR, yes? So Robert says, how do we sell deals to your app on a 50-50 basis? So what happens, Robert, is that when you get a deal and we've appraised it together, I wanna make sure that the deal works. I wanna make sure that the deal stacks. We only put stuff on the app that stacks. Now, off the back of that, the plan is that we sell it to our investors and we work on a 50-50 split fee basis. So if the fee is five grand plus VAT, now we are VAT registered, so it shows you that we're at a level. Lots of other sources, if they're not VAT registered, they're not doing that many deals. Let's face it, to get to VAT element, you've got to be turning over 80, is it 85,000? 85,000 at 5,000 pound a deal. Is you have 15, what's it, about? So it's uh, 10 deals, about 20 deals a year. So that's not a lot, really. We're doing over 500 deals a year. So we're, you know, I want to make sure that you're getting to a certain level. So I will be looking at your deals, making sure that they work, and then we'll be presenting them to our investors. Once we've sold them, we work on a 50-50 split fee basis. Will there be a contract between us? So Robert, yes, there will be a contract between us. Got no issue with that. If you want me to sign one of your NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, or if you want me to sign one of your agreements, I'll get my legal team to look at it, and I've got no issue with that. We've got over 200 members in the Elite Property Tribe, so you're gonna be joining one of the UK's largest um, deal sourcing platforms and deal sourcing providers. And off the back of that, you can all ask them, have I ever not paid anyone? You can check the internet, you can do any research on me as Arshilahi, you can do any research on the Property Investor app, I've never not paid anyone. So yes, you're working with a very bona fide and qualified company. More importantly, when you're going out and you're speaking to an estate agent and you're saying, well, I'm working with this guy, when you're working, when you're calling these estate agent, um, so sorry, so Suraprint says, do you still have the other option where you can pay 349 a month and what level of support is there? So yes, that will be the 52 module program. And yes, that is still available. Uh, one thing I suggest is that, and you will still get the level of support that we discussed on there. So if you want to join the 12 month program, you can do so at that program. So uh, if you've got any questions in a second, I'm going to put on screen, feel free to give me a call. Is that okay? So going back, when you speak to an agent, the one thing that I want you to do is say, guys, it's not just me, it's not just Robert speaking to you. I'm speaking on behalf of 100,000 property investors. These property investors are all through, working through the network of the Property Investor app. So you're giving yourself 
believe it or not, here we go, we'll go back to that in a second. You're giving yourself that credibility that you're working with a credible brand and you've got some backing behind you. Because let's face it, Robert calls up Connells. Connells don't give a damn who Robert is. But in actual fact, if you're saying, well, in actual fact, we've been working with a brand that's been work operational for 20 odd years and the head honcho behind it is Arsh Alahi. If everyone do some research on Arsh, I'm very well documented. On the internet, I'm very well documented. They can do some research and say, okay, yeah, I get it. I work, I want to work with them. Let's get moving forward. So, um, okay, Mike says, could you suggest a company that would help with setting up with their HMRC and company setup? Yeah, very easy to do, Mike. As part of the EPT, that's obviously a big part of the setup, getting you set up correctly. So that's very easy to do. So let's get moving on. If you've got any questions, still keep, still keep uh, throwing them on there. So um, Darshan said, what is a 12 month program? So the 12 month program is the Elite Property Tribe. So if you went on to EPT info, that top one there, that will take you to the, uh, the 12 month program. Just bear in mind the 12 month program, it's a longer program. It's a payment plan, it's more expensive program. What I want to try and do is run this as an intensive. So you've got the um, you've got the six modules over a three month period. So I want to try and condense it so we're getting you more. So you're more than welcome to have a look at the 12 month program, which is EPT info and have a look through there. So it's success in the tribe. I could talk to you about success and students that have done extremely well all night. So Lenka has done so many property deals best part 20 deals that she's done with me Ale, believe it or not he didn't want to in actual fact sell any of these deals he only wanted to find rent to rent properties so he went from seven properties to 17 properties within one year with 100 percent occupancy so he kept every single rent to rent property that he found amanda has sourced a number of different properties all over the country adam has got to be probably one of the most successful uh, sources I've ever worked with. I think we did 60 deals together. 60, six, zero. That's phenomenal. He was a phenomenal deal source machine and he's gone off and built a significant property portfolio of what he's found and what he's learned. We've got Bavneet, we've got Ashley, we've got Christos, we've got Cash, we've got Olive, we've got Priscilla, we've got Sandy, we've got Tamor, we've got Michael. So just so that you know, here we go, Tamor, guy based in Wolverhampton, believe it or not, I actually knew this kid from, uh, from childhood and he approached me and he goes, oh, she goes, I want to I want to do what you're doing. And believe it or not, within the space of two months, I managed to get him three deals. Well, when I say I managed to get him, I taught him what I knew. He came on the program and within a couple of months, he got himself three deals. Within the space of six months, he got him 12, the best part of 12 deals. It's crazy. And again, he saw he got properties in Stoke, he got properties in Hull, he got properties in Bridgewater. Bridgewater's right down south by Devon. He'd never seen a single one of these. And he did it all from based in Wolverhampton whilst running his own business. So he runs his own property, uh, not, not property, he runs his own printing company. So he has his own design, uh, design and printing company. So I could talk to you about people, I could talk to you about people who have done well from the tribe all night because I've been running this program six years and it works extremely well. And as I said, as an elite property tribe member, you can use the leverage of the property investor app to negotiate deals with vendors and agents. So you're no longer just Robert, you're Robert acting on behalf of the property investor app, which is much a, a much wider network than just Robert is as an individual. Does that make sense? So let's just imagine that, you know, when, estate agent goes out you've either got uh, abc estate agents with a, which is an individual or you've got the power of a brand like connell's or reed's reigns which one has the more attractive proposition does that make sense so madashan says is there a different marketing strategy for each type of deal yes there is and believe it or not the 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 ad spend is zero i've not spent a penny on marketing everything that we do is all online based so you're not having to worry about am i going to have to find x amount of hundreds of pounds to spend on marketing because i don't believe in that so just a quick recap before we finish off six easy to follow modules each module will have a mini segment of how to find deals whether it be via the vendor 
or how to go direct the agent. Fortnightly deal clinics from on a Monday. So starts from tomorrow, we have fortnightly deal clinics. Uh, and then that's where you'll see me appraise properties. I'll also appraise other people's properties and we'll do it live together. You get the, the opportunity to shadow me in my office. You get the opportunity to uh, do 10 minute daily calls with me. So if you've got a problem or an issue, book a call, we go through it together. You've got the option to go and access all the other previous webinars and recordings and live meets. You get to JV with me and sell your deals to my database. You get access to all my contracts, contacts, templates and spreadsheets, as well as that you're in the EPT WhatsApp community, which is a community of like-minded individuals going through the same journey as you, which is really powerful. So if you want to join again, you can either go to bit.ly forward slash EPT info, you can go to bit.ly forward slash EPT intensive, or you can go to bit.ly forward slash EPT intensive monthly. So you can either pay in one payment or three payments. So I'm one of the very few people that you can actually contact on the phone. Now, the reason what makes me different is that, you know, if you go to another training company, you try and get hold of the trainer directly. You won't be able to get hold of them. You'll get hold of their PA, you'll get hold of their training staff and some of the people that they've also previously trained, you won't actually get hold of the trainer. What I promise you is that you will always be able to get hold of me. So AJ says, well, I'll automatically get a copy of this recording. So you will get a copy of the recording. Uh, apart from the training course, investment, working with yourself, are there any other startup costs? No, they're not. So the, uh, the only other startup costs, depending if you want to, I'm not saying that you have to, but if you wanted a one-page website, just so that you, rather than say, so if someone says, Darsh, I want to look at your website, you can direct them to the Property Investor app, or if you wanted to direct them to your personal website, you can do a one-page website will cost you less than £100. So that's the only other thing. If you wanted to get some business cards set up, you can do. But again, I've, I've not got a business card. I've not got a business card. I just use everything all digital. You can create your own free business card off an app on your phone. So again, these are all things that I teach you along the way. So going back to the point, I'm one of very few people that you can actually get hold of on the phone. So I put on... I always, if you're in the EPT, you've got access to me through my mobile. So you've got, because I'm in the WhatsApp group, you've always got access to my PA as well. So if you want to book a call, well, when I say book a call, come and book a day in the office with me. You literally speak to Fran, who's my PA, and she will arrange a day with you, uh, provided, just going to make sure that our diaries align so that I'm not in a meeting and I've got the day to spend with you. Does that make sense? So, and my office address is there. So again, come and see the office, come and have a look at the office, see how I structured it, and we'll look at the deals that we're doing. So, are there any other questions? So for those that um, wanted to know a little bit more and you wanna have a chat with me, if you want, just drop me an email this evening. I'm gonna be free for an hour after this session. Cancel, I might give you a quick call. So drop me a quick email to arshilarty.com. I'll check the emails this evening. If you put your mobile number on, please put your mobile number on. I'll give you a quick call and we will discuss the property, uh, sorry, the elite property tribe. So please don't, you know, don't say, oh, Arsh, I want to talk to you about a property, etc. It is about the elite property tribe and I'm being very clear on that. So any other questions? I think we've covered a lot. I was only really meant to be online for, I think it was, 30, uh, 30 minutes. I think we've been on for a little bit longer than that. It's okay. You know, it is what it is. So is that unlimited support? So when you say unlimited support, so yes, you're on a three month program. Um, what we tend to do is that we're after the three months, if you want to join again, what we tend to do is that we just charge a nominal fee just to stay within the community. And so the other guys have paid 300 pounds for the year to stay within the community. Whereas I know that other training companies, they charge you again the same amount, they would charge you another 3,000 to stay. So it's uh, 3,000 pounds for the first uh, for the first program, then you pay 300 pounds to stay in the community for the year, et cetera. And that is unlimited support, yes. Yeah? So you need to pick up the phone to me, you pick up the phone to me, we have that conversation. It's a big claim, Darshan, but I can put you in contact with 200 members that have never been able to, Never had issues getting in contact with me. Yes, I'm busy, but I'm smart with my time. I'm smart with my time, which allows me to spend time. So my time with my mentees is 9 a.m. Oh, sorry, it's 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. 
Monday to Friday. So if you've got that 10 minute call book with me, you'll be booking it between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. And that's the time that I allocate to these, to these guys and appraising these deals. Does that make sense? So any questions, any questions before we sign off for the evening? I appreciate we've been on for a while. Um, I appreciate it's Bank Holiday weekend. I appreciate that you guys want to go and spend some time with your family. Um, unfortunately, the sun's gone in. So um, yeah, I can't say much about that. So Darshan says, thanks for answering all the questions and your time tonight. Hopefully you've found it of use. Hopefully you've, you know, you're taking this seriously. And if you want to have a chat, feel free to reach out to me and say, oh, gosh, I want to have a chat. I'm interested in this. So Nav said, thank you for your time. Great info. Thank you, Nav. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being online. On that note, I wish you all to have a great rest of the bank holiday. I will send out a copy of the recording, It'll probably be tomorrow. Any questions, feel free to get in touch and I will speak to you all soon. On that note, I wish you all a great evening. Take care. Good night. God bless.